Welcome, warriors. Yay. Yeah. We are so excited that we are back again with you this week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're here. We are here, damn it. We are here showing up, doing all the things, including this episode. Um, this episode's topic is going to be all about not wanting to be an inconvenience. Ugh, yeah. Yeah. So like, I mean, I feel it not wanting to be a burden of some kind, even in the most micro of ways. Yes. Yeah. And also like the fear of speaking up that can sometimes come with also not wanting to be an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. So it's like when we choose to keep quiet, when we should, or at least could say Mm -hmm. something to either be to our benefit or to the benefit of a group or a community or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. All right. So like what comes up for you? When you think um, about being an inconvenience so much. And, and the really funny thing is like, I think a lot of the times when I'm afraid of inconveniencing someone else, um, it's really not a big deal. Right. Mm-hmm. But like, I guess like, I don't ever want to come off like a Karen. <laughs> Okay. Right. Like and being demanding. Like, yeah. Right. Or like and privilege or like you, you're yes. owed something. Yes. Ah. And, and I don't ever feel like I'm owed something. Right. But like, so for me, like being an inconvenience is stuff like um, if I'm in a lift and the heat is really hot and I don't want to ask them to turn the heat down. Yeah. Or I don't want to ask if I can open a window and you are nodding your head like you 100% feel it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, I'm just it, saying it for our warriors. Many times. Yeah. Many times. Yeah. Um, or, you know, um, uh, in a restaurant, I don't want to ask like I. it is. It's a little annoying when people ask for like water without ice or seltzer without ice, right? It is a little, it takes more time of the server's time as someone who has worked in restaurants for 10 years. It's not a really big deal, but it's a little annoying. And so for me, <laughs> I need to know why you're making the face ringing. I, I just let them do whatever ice, no ice. If they give me the choice, I always say no ice, but if they me don't, too. yeah, but if they don't give me the choice, I usually am not like no ice. Same. Yeah. hundred percent. Same. Oh, okay. The face was relating a hundred percent. Okay. Like, yeah. I just, I feel like we've never talked about the fact that no. I don't like ice in my water. I don't I like hate ice, ice in, in my water. My, my alcoholic beverages. Those yeah. are the only things I want ice in. Yes. Same. So yes. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it feels like being an inconvenience to ask for no ice. So unless I'm given the choice, I don't do it, you know, or and like if they bring me the want the wrong water. Yeah. I don't make them, I don't make them come back with no. an iceless water. No, just, yep. I wait till it melts or, you know, <laughs> you just I just deal with it. I yeah. just deal with it. I don't drink as much of it, you know? Um, so like things like that, or like, even if like, like, okay, so this is just super random, but like within the last couple of weeks I was eating somewhere and there was a little bit of plastic in my food. I didn't say anything. Ooh, it was okay. not a lot of plastic. It was a little bit of plastic. You know, I didn't want to be an inconvenience. They were really super busy. What kind of plastic? I don't know. A hard piece of plastic. I don't know. Oh, damn. It was like a little piece of plastic. It didn't hurt my teeth. It wasn't like like, uh, you didn't swallow. Like, so you saw it there and removed it. Yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. Yikes. You know, I guess it's not like finding a rat, (laughs) but at the same time, it's not great. (laughs) Right. Like, you know, so it's like, and, and what I will say with being an inconvenience is or not wanting to be an inconvenience is that it's more with friends and with strangers than it is with family. Interesting. Like I can be with my mom. I can be with Dan. I can just, Hey, I'm hot. Hey, I'm cold. Hey, I'm this. Hey, I'm that, mm. you know? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Cause those mine. are your people. Yeah. You know that they have your best interest at mind. They love and care about you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I can totally relate to like the food service thing. I like pepper on everything. And so there's nothing worse than when the server doesn't leave me the pepper mill, like Mm -hmm. grinder. And it's like, sometimes I really want to ask for them to leave it, but then I'm like, what if other tables need the pepper? And I'm, then I'm that person that wants the pepper on my table. What if they don't have, what if they're short on pepper mill shakers today or whatever I come up with every rationale Yes. or the nothing worse though, when they start, they tell you to say wed. Oh my God. For me, I always want more pepper and I'm worried about their arm. Yes. How long it's taking. Right. I'm like, things to do. (laughs) 
Yeah. And like, I just, I literally just thought about it in the moment since we're talking about that, but like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, so like my, one of my mini stories that I thought about when we were talking about this topic was around food also. And it's like, when you're ordering family style with people at a table. Mm -hmm. And so then like immediately I'm thinking about, um, well, I don't want to pick something that I feel like not everyone universally loves. Yes. We're all having to share this food, which let's just be honest. Truly. I hate family style food in restaurants, especially that if it isn't with my immediate family or Adam, because I don't like sharing food. Number one, number Mm -hmm. two, I want to order what I want to order. I don't really Mm -hmm. want to think about everyone else's needs. I feel Mm -hmm. like that's one of those rare moments when like, I don't have to think about anyone, but my own needs in terms of food. Yeah. And so sometimes ordering family style is anxiety producing. It's stressful. I'm like, uh, well, if I order this thing, everyone has to be able to like it because we're all supposed to be sharing and paying equally for it. Right. 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 It's like, if I don't like that thing you ordered, I'm not going to want to try it. And then I'm still paying for it. Right. Right. I'm there. Yes. Things like, I don't want to be that person. It's what it comes down to. Like, so here's my question for you. Okay. Obviously we're using the word inconvenience a lot, but like, Mm -hmm. what do you think the, the exact narrative is? If you had to take the word inconvenience away from the equation, Yeah. like what are, where are these feelings coming from? Do you think if we had to dive deeper into it? Yeah. I feel like it's an, it depends. Okay. And it's, it's like a really, it's an, it depends. Like, so Saturday night we saw each other and we ate indoors, Yeah. but if it wasn't raining, I was going to want to eat outdoors. Right. And I, you, Sarah and Anthony are all okay. Eating indoors. I didn't want to be the one that was an inconvenience. I didn't want to make it because I love you three so much. I was so grateful to hang out with you all. I didn't want to make a bigger production of us being together. And then maybe like y'all wouldn't want to hang out with me again because it's like difficult hanging out with me. Right. So like, that's different. That's a different, that's like a fear being rejected. Right. Versus like, um, I'm going to share a story about uh, a recent trip where I was in the hotel and there was something wrong with my room. Right. Mm -hmm. And that kind of inconvenience, part of it, which I know we're like trying to think of another word was I didn't know if I was making a big deal or not. I had Mm -hmm. to have Sarah come and tell me if this was a big deal or not, because they're busy, they're working, they have other things to tend to. I don't want to bother them if I'm, if my mind is making a big deal out of something that's actually not a big deal. So like, is the narrative that you're annoying? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is my situation. Yeah. Yeah. Like in the lift, when I'm not asking them to turn their heat down, I don't want to be annoying. Yes. Yes. But when it's like with friends, right. That is more like, I don't want to be rejected. Right. Yeah. Cause there's like a relationship at stake, not just like, Oh, like this person's I'm going to make their job harder. If I ask for this thing. Right. Yeah. There's no like real relationship break potential there because you don't. Right. at the end of the day, you don't really care what they think they're getting paid to do their job. Mm-hmm. Right. It, yeah. You don't want to be that person, but it means a little bit. It means something different than yeah. like inconveniencing air quotes, friends and family. Things like right. That. I get it. I totally and, get it. And also if we're being annoying, right. At a restaurant, in a hotel, wherever we are, they're going to want to avoid us more. And what if we actually need something? Yeah. Right. And so right. it's not even just getting the label of annoying, but it's going to maybe impact the rest of your time there. Totally. Yeah. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Oof, oof. That's rough. Yeah. I didn't even think about it like that. <laughs> For me, it also has to do with like in my, in my narrative also with a lot of, a lot of times when this comes up is that it's rooted in like having good manners or something. Yeah. It's like trying to be considerate of other people yes. and their needs and feelings, even yes. if they are being paid as right. we're saying for some of these circumstances anyway, to take care of you. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, another like mini example is just like, sometimes when I get a monthly massage, typically mm-hmm. I, you know, I, um, I go to a place called hand and stone. They're amazing. And they're like a chain, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like you pay a flat fee and you get X amount of services that you want to get either massage or facials and that kind of thing every month. But I always get a massage typically 50 minutes. I see the same person. And so she knows my body. Well, she knows the, you know, 
all the things and we've built a relationship randomly when I've had no choice, but to go with a different massage therapist because she's on vacation or whatever, the dates still line up. Um, I'm immediately back to square one with mm-hmm. someone. And so usually I just keep my mouth shut, even if something yeah. doesn't feel good, even yes. if my body is hurting. Yes. And I'm just like trying not to make their job harder. And right. so if they don't do a lot of verbal check-ins or any verbal check-ins, then I'm not, I have a harder time being the one to be like, Hey, I don't love that pressure. Is there any way you can pull that? Right. Or like, and it's like, again, I'm paying for a service. It's yes. my body. I'm there to feel good. And, you know, um, have my muscles, you know, less be less, become less tense and yeah, you know, relax and whatever else I'm there for. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm assuming if they're good people that care about their job, that they want to make me happy. Right. And so it's like, I'm not sure always with the disconnected is then I think part of it is that I start to assume that I'm not being that I'm, I have bad manners or something. If I correct someone's behavior, yes! even in the job that is very much. You're hiring them for yeah. a service to perform that you exactly. specifically want. Yeah. Right. I'm literally being worked on, right? This is body work and right. I'm the one in charge of my body, even though you're the one working on it. And yeah. so like, uh, yeah. And it's, like, I'm a freaking yoga teacher and I still have trouble with that if it's a new person. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's where my narrative goes to. It's just like, I don't want to be perceived as someone that's doesn't have good manners, which, right. and so many things like so many to me matters and etiquette are different. It's like mm-hmm. etiquette is like rooted in patriarchy and like right. horribleness. Right. And it's mostly reserved for women <laughs> and uh, things are unladylike. And that's a separate conversation. But like manners are typically like you're being considerate. You're thinking about other people's yes. needs and feelings. And, right. and so, right. I think that's the people pleasing aspect that yes. goes into not wanting to be an inconvenience to and others, just wanting to be likable, easygoing, yes. amiable. Like, you know, like, like for me with massages, like I prefer quiet so that I can really like have like a mindfulness experience, like really yeah. be present, have it be relaxing. But like, if the person is super chatty with me, I don't enjoy the experience, but I don't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to go give them a bad review, right? Totally. It's like, that's it. It's like, all right, well, I'll never get this person again. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> that's it. My other thought too, is that like, this is just a sub, right? Yeah. You don't have to deal with this next time. Right. So just let it go. <laughs> right. I know. Rather than speaking up and being annoying. That's it. That's the annoying is really, especially in like with strangers, totally. you know, like, yeah. Yeah. It's judgment, yeah. right? It's mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm assuming that they're going to, I'm going to be the one that they complain about to their coworkers after if I right. say or do something. Right. And moment. then they're going to see my name and be like, Ugh, this again, you know? So, yeah. Okay. So this isn't like a big story, but, but I just feel like this totally just aligns, right? Especially, especially if someone does something nice for you and then you have like a complaint or something. Right. Mm. So as you know, I was in the city last weekend. Mm-hmm. And as everyone knows, uh, my flight to the city was pretty awful. <laughs> yup. And, and so I had, uh, arrived at my hotel and the person greeting me was like, Hey, how are you? And I was like, Oh, can I tell you the truth? Right. Cause again, you know me, I can't have superficial conversation. I right. can't be like, Oh, I'm great. Right. Sure. So, I, so the person was like, yeah, totally. Like, you know, and And I told them the story and they're like, oh, my God, that is so awful. I've never heard that before. Here, here is a free drink at our bar once you're all like, you know, ready and this and that, like, you know, and they just gave me a free drink. And that was awesome. So I go up to my room and at this point I meet Sarah. My room looks clean. Everything looks fine. Um, I go into the bathroom and the bathroom has like a little bit of like a mildewy smell. Right. And I'm like, okay, is this is this something I can deal with? Is this okay? Like, I'm not going to be in my room that much, right? I only need to really use it to shower and use the bathroom. Like, am I okay with this mildewy smell, right? So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's not a big deal. I don't want to be an inconvenience. I don't want to be annoying. They just gave me a free drink. They were so nice to me. Right. So then Sarah and I go out, I go buy a new hoodie because I have to buy a new hoodie. You know, then her and I, we grab a drink. Then, you know, we we go up to the bar, we get that free drink, whatever. And then finally, we're back in our rooms. Um, We're in separate rooms. We're not sharing rooms. And it's like after midnight, 
and I'm in the bathroom again. And I'm like, uh, I, I don't know if I'm making a big deal out of this. So I'm like, Sarah, can you come here? And she was like, oh my God, that's awful. She's like, no, that is, that is a bad smell. You should not be in this room. <laughs> Yikes. And she went with me to say, Hey, can I change rooms? Mm. But if she didn't do that, I probably would have tolerated it because they were so nice to me and right. they didn't give me a horrible airplane experience and they still were giving me a free drink from it. And they were so lovely and welcoming. Like I didn't want to inconvenience them by having them move <laughs> me to another room. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oof. Right. Yeah. It's like you, you don't want to, you don't want to be looked at as making someone's day more challenging, especially when you have compassion for how hard that they work yeah. and the industry that they're in is rough, you know, like, and so I think what it sounds like, isn't it so interesting though? What I what makes me wonder about even for myself all the time too. And in that story, you just shared with Sarah coming in to like validate, right? Yeah. It's just that then the, what goes through our head is just somebody else tell me that I'm not crazy. Yes. And then if you also have that experience, okay, now we're a team and now I'm not the, now I don't have to overthink what's going mm -hmm. on in my head or in my nose, even though you really knew something was off, yes. you knew something was wrong, but it's like, yet we deny ourselves, uh, potentially not that complicated to fix just switching right. rooms. You know, they probably right. have dozens of empty rooms that are clean and perfectly non mildew smelly and ready to go. Yeah. They could just say, we're so sorry about that. Here's your new key. And there's here and off you go. Easy peasy. Yeah. But like, I'm, I'm so with you there. Yeah. So like, has it ever happened? What's like the, is there a situation or a story where you did advocate or speak up and like, it didn't go well or. Not? I mean, yeah, I feel like, I feel like the negatives always stand out more than the positives. Yep. Right. Totally. So I feel negativity, like negativity bias. We exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we. I'm sure there's times like I know that like when when I was in improv pre pandemic and there was this guy that was just a little bit, you know, uh, unaware of the impact of the negative impact he was making on people. And I spoke up. Things changed and they were good. And I wasn't like known as like, they looked at me as like a leader in that moment mm. and not as someone who was annoying and like criticizing someone. And I wasn't even criticizing them, but I was right. pointing out behaviors that didn't work in a group setting. Right. And so positive, but like the thing that always sticks out to me is when, um, I was working for, or I was contracting with a kid's yoga company and I'd been with them for five years. Right. And they kept making more money. Their contracts with schools kept changing and they weren't paying me anymore. And so of after course. five years, I said, and, and my level of responsibility kept increasing. Right. Sure. But for those first five years, I was afraid to speak up because I loved the job. I loved what I was doing. I love the kids, you know, yeah, you were I, paying your dues, you yes, know, quote unquote, even though exactly. nobody asked you to, you just had that in your mind. Totally, yep. totally with you. And so I asked them for a raise and I had known other people in the company that had asked for more money and they didn't have to jump through hoops for it. And I had to have two one hour meetings with both the bosses having conversations about it. Um, I had to hear about all of their things that they had to pay for which is actually not what you're supposed to do in a company. Like if, so, if your boss is like, oh, but I have to pay a monthly, you know, subscription to Zoom, doesn't fucking matter. Doesn't, like it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter. To you. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, um, and I had to have two different. Yeah, exactly. I, so I had two different one hour meetings with them. Um, I had to hear all the reasons why what I was asking was a huge inconvenience to the company, how it was going to impact the company. Um, and finally, they were willing to raise my rate with some schools, but not the school that I had been with for five years. So they kept raising the rate on that school. Right. So what was the reason? I don't even raising? I don't even know. I don't I that don't even no know. Sense. They said that that school pays less than other schools, oh, but that okay. school kept paying more every year. And that's still less than other schools. So that was yeah. their argument. That yeah. Yeah. That's right. Bullshit. And so then after that, you know, I was like, oh, okay. And that's actually part of the reason I decided to move to Colorado 
right? I was like, well, I'm done working in schools for them then. Like yeah. after five years. And then when the pandemic happened and they were trying to have us do very certain work uh, through Zoom and not compensating us for that and having us do unpaid meetings, and I spoke up and I gave a broke down, a breakdown of all of the money that they were making now that everything had moved online. They got really mad at me and then they never wanted to work with me again. Yeah. So that's what I think of when I think of speaking yeah. up for yourself. And right. I did it so kindly and so non-attacking. And so matter of fact, like, hey, now that everything of yours is switching to online, here's the amount of money you're making from people. You're still charging them the same amount that you were charging for in-person stuff, but now your overhead is decreased. And I wasn't saying it in any way, except for here are the facts. And they were like, obviously we can never work together again now. So that's, that's my, yeah, that's a pretty shitty outcome. Yeah. For yeah. speaking up. Yeah. Right. Rough. For speaking up. Exactly. Yeah. What, what about you? Have you had a, a, a situation where you spoke up and then yeah. I mean, like you, I'm sure there, I could sit here and come up with a few dozen just off the top of my head, but one that stands out was, you know, I was, um, the director of a program that had, we had almost a hundred kids and they were really, really small. They were like between four and six. And so a lot of them, a lot of all children, right. Some, some children have, um, unique needs, but generally children in, in an early childhood age range, don't necessarily have the language skills to be able to share their physical or health needs with you. Right. And so, um, at this program, you know, there was a nurse and, uh, the nurse would let us know ahead of time if there were dietary restrictions or allergy problems or just a variety of needs. So that way, when we would bring the kids, um, for lunch, we knew what they could eat, what they couldn't eat, you know, if they needed to be separated at a different table from the other kids, all the things we had that information. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I've been working, uh, with these people for a long time and I didn't really, I didn't have like a, I had like no relationship with this nurse really. Like it was just very much just like, like you do your job. I do mine. Like we didn't really have to, we didn't really, it was a big, huge, huge program. Like we didn't really have to communicate very often. Um, and thankfully our, the injuries were minimal. Right. And so knock wood. I mean, I don't know why I'm knocking wood now. This was so many years ago, <laughs> but still like, just even just thinking about injury, I just want to like put a good wood knocking in, yes. the, in the universe, yeah. with no injuries for myself and everyone right now. Um, anyway, so, uh, a little boy had come off the bus and it was, it was the beginning. Uh, it was like the first day of this, of this new program. And so, I didn't have any information on this child. And so I, I happened to notice, or actually, no, I didn't notice. Cause again, I was directing. And so like all these kids were coming at me out of nowhere. I'm like delegating and all this stuff. One of, um, one of my staff came up to me and was like, Hey, Margo, I noticed this, um, ID bracelet on this kid. Like, can you come look at it? And so I'm like, of course. Like, so I go over and it's like a serious like medical bracelet like oh it isn't God, hospital yeah. bracelet it's actually yeah. like solid gold yeah and it's got the child's name date of birth the severity of their peanut allergy like oh I'm God. like somebody had this made like this isn't right. just like something slight like this must be severe right yes and so I go back through my files and there was nothing about this child's peanut allergy and when I tell you that the lunches at this, at this okay. program were extremely questionable at best, right? Like who the fuck knows what's, what they're being cooked with and whatever else. And so I'm just like, holy fuck, like this kid needs yes. something more probably. And so, you know, first I talked to my assistant about it. We like, we got our like United front together. We're like, this was a huge ball dropped. Like, why didn't we get this right ahead of time? This could have been a fucking disaster. Yes. If, if that staff member hadn't, you know, alerted me to this, then like what that kid could have eaten mm -hmm. something horrible and went into anaphylactic shock. And then what, oh my God, just even thinking about yeah. it in the review, I have, I'm sweating and I'm sure. Yeah. No, no, it's like, such an truly, important my thing. My whole body feels wrong right now. Yeah. I just, yeah, I just, oh my it God. It can't be so overlooked. Stressed. Yeah, it cannot be. And so we went and spoke to the nurse about this situation and what we were met with was so volatile and filled with rage. Oh my God. And it really made me so angry because 
immediately we got it. I don't know if she was just having a bad moment or a bad day or what the deal was, but she went from calm to, to not calm, you know, zero Mm -hmm. to 60 in what felt like under a minute, like, you know, we, she was kind of just like, Oh, sorry about that. Here's, here's the medical form. Right. And we were like, we continue to express how like dangerous this could have been. And she did not appreciate us like making her feel guilt about fucking up. And it's like, okay, yeah, we're all human beings, but like, guess what? That would have not just been on my ass. It would have been on yours too and the entire company. And so you know, I feel like I felt like the, the severity of the situation was not being met with that reaction. And so my assistants and I being very much of the same mind and energy, we, we weren't ready to let it go. in under a minute, you Mm -hmm. know, like I wanted this woman to know that like, we were really scared and shaken up by learning this information in a very inappropriate way from a 20 year old who shouldn't have had to be the one to notice this. Right. Right. Totally. Um, and so, you know, obviously everything worked out. Everything was fine, but she was really angry, really upset. In fact, we had to get like the, the big boss was involved because, and they kind of took her side in a way it was like, well, everybody messes up and you need to let it go and get over it and don't, and shut your mouth about it. Right. Like, no, it's like, how do we repair this? So I trust you. Like, (laughs) let's just say that the relationship ended very shortly after that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we, we left like flabbergasted and like, right. thankfully our staff was like really supportive. Cause like, I was very emotional about the situation. I was really upset. And, um, and they were like, oh, we know that they don't care. Like, you know, it's not you, it's that you care and they don't. Right. 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 Um, and I think part of the reason too, was that like the big, big boss and this woman were around the same age. They were friends. They knew each other's families. They did barbecues and all the things. And so there was more compassion for that situation mm-hmm. versus what we were dealing with. So <laughs> yeah, there's that. And so it was like speaking up was important. And I'm proud at the end of the day that yeah. we did. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was, and I mean, God help us all. If like anything had happened to that kid, I, I this would be a very different story maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't received well. Right. No. And so it's like then having to live with that situation and still be okay with like what I said and did. Right. right? And right. know that I did, I did, even with the angry and the vitriol or whatever, that I did what I know is correct. Right. So, right. And like, keeping that narrative it. for the next time. It's like, right. no, I need to speak up again because what I did was right in the speaking up. I wasn't annoying. I wasn't an inconvenience. I was advocating for safety, you know, like literally. So that, yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, but it's like, it's shit like that, that keeps people from saying stuff sometimes. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's just like, we can't always, we cannot let our fear sometimes be, get the best of us, especially right. when it comes to advocating for others, but we are people too. And we need to advocate for ourselves, the people that we serve and our communities, right. In our, in our care. Yeah. And, um, Sometimes we got to just live with the aftermath of the discomfort that may come with an unsavory conversation or interaction or situation. Right. And that's that. Right. I mean, that's that's even like the fear in restaurants is like, if I ask for something, like maybe someone's going to roll their eyes, which is different than like your experience, but sure. On a level, it's kind of like, you know, it's like, I'm just afraid of a negative response, you know? Yeah. Um, And, and, and so it's just like, I feel like it's so important to keep in mind, especially for these little things, right? Like if I want more pepper, right. At, at the restaurant, Mm -hmm. um, they can say yes, they can say no. Right. It's like, it's not a big request. And also like, if they forget, we can be also like kind and supportive and understanding of them if they forget but it's still okay to ask. It's like, you're not being annoying asking to enjoy your night out at a restaurant. You're exactly. not being annoying asking to enjoy your massage that you're paying for, yeah. right? You're not being annoying asking for a non-smelling room. Yep. Yeah, right. It was also maybe about safety in your situation too. It's like, who knows? Mildew is a hazardous toxin. Yeah. Well, Sarah said it smelled like something different to her. So we'll just who knows? Leave it at that in a negative way. So yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. She was but like, yeah. 
get out of there. <laughs> Time to switch. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. So yeah, I think warriors take some time to think about how this feels for you. What comes up for you when you hear us chat about this topic? I'm sure that all of you have your own dozens of stories about a time when you inconvenienced um, yourself. So you didn't inconvenience others. (laughs) Yes, that's it. Yeah. Um, And when you maybe forgot that you were a person deserving of, you know, the same level of care and consideration and compassion that you, uh, we, we at least assume that you offer to others and that you try to offer to others. Um, and can you think of a time when speaking up didn't feel great, but was really necessary at the end of the day mm-hmm. for your well being, for the well being of your loved ones or people in your care? Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, do you have experience with not speaking up or trying to avoid it? out of fear of rejection or fear of retaliation or, mm-hmm. um, I mean, making someone angry, the discomfort, yeah. right. The micro things like eye rolling is a really minor thing, but like, you know, it's, that's part of the discomfort. Right. And so like, what yeah. have you, what have you avoided and what are, what, if any, are some of the practices surrounding moving through it anyway? Yes. Yeah. Right? And I know that's for me, one of the biggest lessons is that like, at the end of the day, as long as you're physically safe, right? Yeah. You can deal with the the bullshit, the words, the harsh language, the discomfort in a conversation or whatever. Yeah. And so as long as you feel safe physically, you know, right. Um, you can sort of dip your toe in the water with like the easy things, like asking mm-hmm. for a guy to stand there longer and give you more pepper. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so that way you are better at potentially tackling the bigger conversations, like speaking to an employer, um, or not even an employer, a contractor company, right. Or, or having a conversation with a person, you know, when it comes to someone's safety. And so like, wait, yeah, wait, I have a question. Yeah. After we've had this conversation now, are you going to change any behaviors? Like if you get the masseuse that, that isn't giving you the good massage, are you going to be like, Hey, I think so. Okay. I I feel like we should make a pact. Okay. The next time we're in the lift and it's too hot or we want more pepper or, you know, something's just a little bit annoying to us. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we just speak up? And then like, we'll report back at some point about how it went. Yeah, totally. Okay. And I just want to say too, that like, here we are at 40 years old. Like I've done, I'm doing much better now than yes. I used to yes. 10 years ago. Right. Totally. Like I, I am totally. asking for the pepper, but yes. I, now it's about not apologizing to the yes. server when they stand there for yes. more than t- eight seconds. Right? Exactly. So it's like, like shrinking gonna, and being like, thank you. Like, yeah, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to have inconvenienced you. Like I'm not apologizing for that right. shit anymore. So there's right. that, right. There's progress here, warriors. And we know that you probably have that too, or maybe you don't, maybe this can be a challenge that Abby's offering that you can take on too. Yeah. What's one small or big, but let's start small. We can do Mm -hmm. small things here, right? Small thing that you can do this week or in the, in the, in the near future to not inconvenience yourself because you might potentially be inconveniencing somebody else. Yeah. Try it out. I like it. I like that challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Next hot lift. I'm, I'm, Ooh, hot lift. That needs to be a new company. What happens in a hot Hot lift? lift. And to be fair, I took like four lifts in the last few days and one, I didn't speak up, but one, I did speak up. Right. So honey. Yeah. Yeah. It's all a work in progress. Do you have a win Win of the week? week? Win of the week. I do. I do. I love Broadway. Mm -hmm. I miss, I miss New York city. Yeah. Pretty much for move Broadway. You should probably move back. To yeah, that. we'll see. We'll <laughs> Dan, see. Dan, you listening? It's it's a lot more rainy. We get sunshine a lot here. You get a lot of snow too. This, we, this year some, especially. This year. This year. We don't have ticks, you know, like, you know. I never have a tick problem, but sure. Upstate has a tick problem, but okay. All right. Maybe we just moved to Long Island, but, but I love Broadway. Broadway makes me so happy. I listen to Broadway music a lot on Spotify. A mm-hmm. lot. Yeah. 
And so coming to New York, I was like, I want to see a Broadway show. And then the question is, do I see one that I've already seen because I know that those give me joy or do I try something new? And I found out about the show Anne Juliet. And Anne Juliet is the retelling of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. And it has some music from the 90s, from the early 2000s, from now, all music by Max Martin, who I didn't know I was a huge fan of. I just liked all his songs, didn't know that he was in charge of them. Um, anyway, saw the show, obsessed, been perseverating on it for days, can't stop thinking about it, can't stop, you know, singing it in my mind. And that was a huge win. I mm -hmm. saw it live. I highly recommend it. It gives me so much joy. It was so hard not to sing every single song and huge win. Yes, that's massive. It's so good when you can, when a show stays with you for days and weeks and months later, that's oh uh, my those God, are always my favorite when like some shows, look, let's just be real. You couldn't be obsessed with Broadway like we are, but yes. not every show is perfect, right? No, not every show is uh -uh. the same. Some mm -hmm. shows you enjoyed in the moment. And then it's kind of like, oh yeah, I saw that. Like the next year you're like, what did I see last year? Oh yeah, I saw that, but it isn't like amazing. And then others, you're just like, they live in your soul. Yes. And so maybe that's going to be what this one is for you. For I'm already bit. waiting for Denver to come to Denver. And I've already decided that if Dan and I do move back to New York, um, I'm just going to have to try to get a job there because there you go. holy crap, I'm obsessed. Great, get a job there so you can get me good tickets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so for this. Yes. Selfishly yes. from on and multiple fronts. We can dance on the stage. Maybe that. All right. Now I mean, I'm if you have a job there, make friends like, with people. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that is a massive win. Yes. Awesome. All right. Warriors. We love you so much. Thank you for tuning in this week. If you'd like to connect with us for any reason, you can join our Instagram family. We are at anxiety warriors podcast, or you can email us at anxiety warriors podcast at gmail.com. You can shout out your wins of the week, share any topic ideas you have with us, or if you think it'd be a great fit as a guest on our show, let us know. Let's get you scheduled on the calendar. Help you tell your story. Please take a couple of seconds, smash that five-star rating on Apple podcast, leave us a review, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, wherever you're listening right now, follow the show, like, and subscribe, do all the things to help us, you know, get more listeners and followers and members of our family, our warrior mm -hmm. fam. Let's mm -hmm. help us continue to grow in this, in all of these spaces. We love it. Yes. And you can also hop on into our show notes and check out our fabulous merch. Grab yourself something fun to support our show in style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do it now. Hit the button. Do it. Well, thank you all so much for going on this journey with us. We're so grateful we get to do this with y'all. Till next time.